1. HDR peak brightness on the Sony A95L could reach 2000 nits, but there's a catch. It's only in vivid mode on small window sizes. We used a 2% window, and after around 10 seconds, the brightness would plunge to less than 1500 nits, which is as short-lived as Taylor Swift's relationships. Of course, what's more useful is the A95L's peak brightness in a more accurate picture mode, and we measured 1350 nits on a 10% window after calibration to D65 white point, and around 240 nits full screen, which is competitive with other flagship OLED TVs this year. To deliver this level of light output, the Sony A95L must be equipped with the latest second-generation QD OLED panel supplied by Samsung Display, as confirmed by the more prominent blue hump on the spectral power distribution chart. QD OLED technology brings multiple benefits thanks to the absence of white subpixels, many of which were showcased on the Bravia A95L including the lack of chrominance overshoot artifacts in very dark scenes, not to mention high color luminance from QD OLED's true RGB additive light. At a one-to-one -one media briefing, Sony actually put together a side-by-side -side darkroom comparison against an LG G3 with dynamic tone mapping left at its default setting of ON, and a Samsung S95C in their respective filmmaker mode with all energy saving settings disabled, but we're not allowed to take any photos or film any footage of these competing TVs, so I will wait until I get the chance to do my own calibrated comparisons in my own test room before passing judgement. Besides the latest generation QD OLED panel, another hardware upgrade on the Bravia A95L is the new MediaTek Pentonic 1000 chipset, Identified as MT5897 in the diagnostic application IDA we installed on the TV. Taking full advantage of the more powerful processor, Sony has revamped the user interface or UI on the A95L, which brings several key changes. If we summon the quick settings menu on the A95L, you can see a new content type tab with three options, namely video or images game, and PC, each leading to further curation of relevant picture modes. For example, with content type set to game, you will get a selection of standard, FPS game which brightens near black gamma to expose enemies lurking in the dark, an RTS game that injects more contrast and saturation to the picture. But at the end of the day, the standard preset is still the most accurate for playing games. With content type set to video or images, the previously most accurate custom picture mode has now been replaced by professional, which underlines Sony's commitment to reproducing the creative intent, such as with the BVM X300 and HX310 reference monitors widely used in post-production studios. Interestingly, in professional mode, we measured SDR peak white to be close to the Rec. 709 target of 100 candelas per square meter out of the box, and not more than 130 candelas per square meter even with the brightness value maxed out. Since SDR peak luminance was set to off by default in this picture preset. Another new picture mode introduced on the Sony A95L is the calm viewing mode which lowers the TV's contrast and saturation for winding down in the evening. I mean, gin and tonic usually does it for me. But I've been told that calm mode is mainly to stop children from becoming overstimulated before bedtime. Delving into the picture settings menu, I'm pleased to find that any adjustment will now be applied globally to all inputs and even video apps as long as you use the same picture mode with the option of customizing per input if required. To illustrate, here I've decreased the SDR brightness setting from the default value of 40 to 36 in professional mode on the HDMI 3 input, and once we fire up Netflix, summon the picture menu and go into the brightness submenu, you can see that the SDR brightness setting is now also at 36 which is an improvement over previous Sony TVs where users or calibrators had to manually go into each input to apply their calibrated settings. Of course, 
I would be remiss if I didn't point out that all other major TV manufacturers have already implemented this copy to all inputs function on their TVs for years, but at least Sony is joining them from the A95L onwards. Exploring further inside the Motion Flow submenu, another welcome development is the separation of the smoothness motion interpolation control into two settings. Namely, smoothness film for low frame rate content such as 24 frames per second movies, and smoothness camera for higher frame rate material such as 50Hz or 60Hz sports broadcast. In other words, these are the dejudder and de blur settings I've been lobbying Sony to add throughout my reviews. The Japanese brand still doesn't separate its motion flow settings into low frame rate and high frame rate interpolation. So if you use the smoothness control to reduce motion blur when watching sports, you will also be introducing so opera effect or SOE and interpolation artifacts to 24p content. So many thanks to the company's engineers for listening to feedback. To demonstrate why this change is beneficial, on the Sony A95L, you can now increase the smoothness camera setting to reduce motion blur in 50fps or 60fps content without incurring soap opera effect or interpolation artifacts in 24fps or 25fps films. If you are sensitive to the mild stutter inherent in 24p movies, which is made more obvious by OLED's near instantaneous pixel response time, you can bump up the smoothness film setting to alleviate the 24p stutter. There are only three levels of intensity for each smoothness setting apart from off which is less granular than similar controls offered by rival TV brands. But given the class-leading motion processing we've witnessed on Sony TVs so far, I have high hopes that it's finally possible to use one set of motion settings for all types of content on the Bravia A95L. The clearness black frame insertion or BFI setting continued to be an on-off toggle, with low being off and high being on. It's 60Hz BFI and so would lead to a dimmer and more flickery picture. Most people will probably prefer to keep it disabled. The onboard MediaTek Pentonic 1000 chipset promises 4K 120Hz Dolby Vision support, but it's not available yet on the Sony A95L based on our testing. When you go into the HDMI signal format submenu, there are three options. Selecting Enhanced Format 4K120 is necessary to enable HDMI 2.1 FRL or Fixed Rate Link Signaling for 4K 120Hz gameplay, but as you can see from the edit, this would also disable Dolby Vision support. To enable Dolby Vision support, you will need to switch HDMI Signal Format to Enhanced Format, which doesn't even say Dolby Vision, unlike on previous Sony TVs with HDMI 2.1 support. What this means is that 4K 120Hz and Dolby Vision remain mutually exclusive at the time we tested the A95L in August 2023, but Sony said the TV is still scheduled to support 4K 120Hz Dolby Vision following a firmware update. Come to think of it, perhaps the reason why Sony did not label the first enhanced format setting as Dolby Vision in the first place is because all options will support Dolby Vision after the firmware update. Talking about gaming, input lag in game mode measured 16 milliseconds at 60 frames per second, halving to 8 milliseconds at 120 frames per second, with negligible increase in latency after we engaged VRR, representing an improvement over previous Sony TVs with the MediaTek MT5895 SoC, where VRR added at least 4 milliseconds of input lag. As borne out by my CES scoop regarding the Pentonic 1000 chipset, only two out of four HDMI ports on the Sony A95L are HDMI 2.1, each supporting the full HDMI 2.1 bandwidth of 48 gigabits per second. We did not see any evidence of HDIG support on the A95L. Setting HDR to mapping to off would merely brighten the PQ UTF tracking and create a roll off, but we will reserve judgment until we can do more comprehensive testing on a finalized production sample. Despite the excitement over the 3D light calibration potential offered by MediaTek Pentonic's Kalman Ready functionality, the calibration methodology on the Sony A95L appeared unchanged from before, judging from the Kalman for Bravia app, as well as the Expert 1 and Expert 2 white balance controls. 
because we could not log onto the same intranet network at Sony UK's office with our own laptop, we did not manage to calibrate the A95L using the Kalman for Bravia app and only had time to carry out a quick two-point white balance adjustment. Even so, we achieved very good SDR color accuracy with an average data error of 1.27 on this challenging color checker SG chart where 140 patches were measured and no error exceeding the humanly perceptible threshold of Delta Error 3. For watching WCG HDR content, DCI-P3 color gamut coverage came in at almost 100% in UV terms, while Red 2020 coverage was 91.5%. As is common on Sony OLED TVs, near black gamma tracked slightly brighter than reference on the Bravia A95L in both SDR and HDR modes which is occasionally visible in a handful of dark scenes we managed to demo in comparison to a BVM HX310 mastering monitor during our limited time testing a 65-inch A95L at Sony's UK office. However, there's a possibility that this issue can be mitigated to a certain degree by full calibration with Kalman AutoCal. This is something we intend to explore when we get our hands on a finalized retail version. On the subject of calibration, UK electrical retailer Cranberry Moore, who have kindly sponsored this video, are offering their in-store calibration service at only £99 for a limited time if you buy any 2023 OLED TV from them. I have personally trained their calibrator David Connor to my own high standards. He will run in the TV, calibrate it, and deliver it to you after having the calibration approved by me. We have been doing this for more than two years, and customer feedback has been excellent. So please give Cranberry Moore a call if you wish to buy a calibrated TV, or even any new television at a competitive price with top-notch customer service. Thanks again for your support. Okay, at Sony UK, we also saw a 77-inch Sony A95L for the first time, whose screen was propped up by a pair of metallic feet in the soundbar stand position. Sony was using the 77A95L to demonstrate its 360 spatial sound mapping technology together with the company's soundbar and wireless speakers, and the TV served up a treat. Courtesy of QD OLED's picture quality goodness, Sony's excellent video processing, as well as strong acoustic surface audio plus sound. In case you are wondering why I did not measure the 77-inch A95L, it's because the firmware on the 65-inch sample was closer to a final production model. Sony was at pains to emphasize that its engineers are still working on some final tweaks before the TV hits store shelves, hopefully in September for the UK and other European markets. Nevertheless, based on what I saw and tested on a 65-inch A95L, which is about as pre-finalized as a pre-finalized sample can be, the QD OLED TV is going to be a very strong contender in our annual TV shootout event. To find out how Sony's first QD OLED TV fared at last year's shootout, please watch our coverage video by clicking here.